Hey guys, I'm Sanzi. I'm a grade 11 Western student and today we present to you our new initiative called the Knowledge Effect where we'll be discussing heavy topics such as this one and just bringing light to these topics. So with, without further ado, let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is Mazuza Farbin. I am in grade 12 um, in the IB program and I'll actually be graduating this year from Weston CI. Um, as Sandy said in the introduction, we're actually going to be talking about uh, homelessness as well as the neglect of homeless youth, which is an issue that's quite prevalent in um, today's day, um, as well as just in general within our community. Um, first and foremost, I think it's very important for us to define homelessness. Um, and homelessness is exactly the idea um, or the situation of an individual family or rather community of people who um, have or go without stable, safe, permanent, appropriate housing um, or the immediate prospect um, means and ability of actually acquiring it. And there are many different groups of people who are affected in different ways um, and everyone's Every individual's experience with homelessness is quite unique because it's not strictly an issue of housing instability. It can actually be the idea of simply a community who is in the process of not being able to acquire it. Um, and so these differences are very important when actually establishing what homelessness is as well as some solutions to homelessness specifically within the Western community. Um, and that is why we are speaking about uh, homelessness and the prospect of what it entails within our society. Um, with this being said, I'll actually pass it on uh, back to Sanzi, who is going to talk about some of the various myths and misconceptions around homelessness. There are various myths and misconceptions when it comes to the issue of homelessness. Now, some believe that the choice, that the idea of people experiencing homelessness when they can just pick themselves up by the bootstraps that they want to, and that they are simply unhoused because they're so-called lazy. However, homelessness is a choice, and there are many reasons why people experience this, including the lack of structural support for those experiencing poverty, job loss, the inadequate discharge planning for those leaving hospitals, correctional facilities, mental health issues, and a lot more, as well as the inadequate and affordable housing places for low income and vulnerable populations are also at risk of homelessness. Many different terms are used to describe young people experiencing homelessness, including street youth, street kids, runaway, homeless youth, etc. Youth homelessness refers to young people between the age of 13 and 24 who are living independently of parents and or caregivers and importantly lack many of the social supports deemed necessary for the transition from childhood to the adulthood. In such circumstances, they do not have a stable or consistent residence or source of income, nor do they necessarily have adequate access to the support networks necessary to foster a safe and nurturing transition into the responsibilities of adulthood. According to Without a Home, the National Youth Homelessness Survey, 20% of homeless population in Canada is comprised of youth between the ages of 13 and 24. In a given year, there are at least 35,000 to 40,000 youth experiencing homelessness. They may be temporarily living in hostels, staying with friends, living in squats, renting cheap homes in boarding houses or, hotel or hotels, or actually living on the streets. They may also be living with parents or relatives while at imminent risk of losing their shelter. The reality is that over the course of time, many youth experiencing homelessness move between these various housing situations. The instability of housing is partially what tr characterizes their homelessness. Yeah, it's very important to also establish that youth homelessness is very, a very much distinct form of homelessness compared to adult homelessness. Uh, both in terms of its causes as well as even consequences. Um, but it's also something that we have to take into great consideration when thinking about applying different intervention plans um, and prevention plans for homelessness. Uh, because street youth, who uh, unlike uh, adults who actually experience homelessness too, they leave their homes um, that are already defined by 
relationships uh, in which they are typically dependent on adult caregivers and this can be parents, relatives, or even guardians. And actually there's a high percentage of youth who experience homelessness that um, have identified that uh, they were in the care of CPS, which is Child Protective Services. Um, and in fact, 77.5% of youth who actually experience homelessness repeat, report that their inability to get along with their parents or somebody in their household that has played that role um, has been a significant role and it has been a significant reason as to why they ended up leaving their home and uh, becoming homeless and why becoming homeless was ultimately a better alternative, alternative as opposed to staying at home um, with said parent. So for all of these reasons and even more, I think that a youth-based strategy and the services that support the strategy, they have to be very much distinct from the adult, uh, the adult homelessness sector and the intervention plans that are specifically in targeting, um, that specifically target adult homelessness. Um, with that being said, maybe uh, Sansi, you could possibly take a look at how um, youth who experience homelessness is very much a diverse group of people. As a group, youth experiencing homelessness are really diverse. There are typically more male unhoused youth than females. Um, according to a report, it's shown that 63% of youth in shelters are male, while 37% are female, which may be an outcome of the fact that young women are especially at risk of crime and violence, including sexual assault, while experiencing homelessness, leading them to find alternative, alternative to the streets, even if those alternatives pose other significant risks. So based on this research, we also found out that 59.6% um, of homeless youth who are street involved report violent victimization, meaning that they are six times more likely to be victimized compared to the general population, as well as the more time a youth experiences homelessness, the more likely they are to be exposed to a number of risks such as sexual exploitation, economic exploitation, traumatic events, declining health and addictions. And just to add to what Sansi said, I think that uh, it's very important for us to notice that there has been a big um, significant portion of subpopulations of youth who are very much overrepresented, um, including indigenous youth uh, and in some cities like Toronto, black youth, um, as well as youth who identify as a part of the LGBTQ plus community who make up a great percent of youth experiencing homelessness. There are these great unique barriers that also exist for trans youth um, who are accessing shelter systems. And so we see how these factors, these, um, these uh, certain different representation groups have actually been systematically sort of oppressed by the system of homelessness. Um, and it's very much something that we need to take a look at when we're addressing something as broad of a topic as homelessness, because when creating a prevention plan, we have to make sure that all groups of youth are represented um, and that we're not leaving anybody behind. Um, Yusuf, maybe you could possibly take a look at some of the common factors um, when looking at youth homelessness. Uh, yeah, some common factors when looking at youth homelessness include the young age and lack of experience of independent living. This is important to consider because any response to homelessness must address the causes and conditions of homelessness. While there are some commonalities that frame the experience of homelessness for young people and adults, the lack of affordable housing, system failures in healthcare and corrections, for instance, there are important differences including physical, mental, social, and emotional development. Youth experiencing homelessness typically lack the experience and skills necessary to live independently, and this is especially true for those under the age of 18. Moreover, the causes of youth homelessness are not necessarily the same as those that impact adults. Family conflict underlies youth homelessness, and many are fleeing abuse or leaving the care of child welfare services. Now, one solution to help youth experiencing homelessness is to make healthy transitions to adulthood and avoid life on the streets is by strengthening families and addressing their needs. There are a number of programs available to help homelessness or at-risk family, youth, and children. 
A Way Home Canada features key examples of youth services, and some of them include at-school intervisions, family reconnection, support for LGBTQ plus youth, support for youth transitioning from care, employment, training, education, youth transitional housing and housing first. Yeah, two direct shelter accessible centers for youth who are homeless are the following. Youth Reconnect is our early intervention shelter diversion program developed by Raft Niagara Resource Services for Youth in Ontario. The initiative helps homeless and at-risk youth access resources, increase their self-sufficiency, assist to maintain school attendance, and secure housing. Link delivered by Aunt Leia's house in British Columbia provides a series of services and programs for youth in transition from foster care. Link offers live life skills, workshops, drop-in, outreach, and one-on-one -on -one support to work on challenges identified by youth. If we want to address homelessness through prevention, we, meet, we need to be clear on exactly what we mean. What are the system changes and structural shifts that reduce the likelihood that someone will become homeless? What are the intervention strategies that can support people who are at higher risk of homelessness or have recently become homeless? How can we ensure that people who are been who have been homeless and who are now housed do not experience homelessness again? And just to further add and uh, really enhance Sansi's point about this new direction that um, many communities are taking with homelessness prevention, I think it's very important for us to note down that this framework actually has three main parts. The first uh, makes this case for homelessness prevention through a study of public health model of prevention and international examples of prevention. And the second part provides more of a clear de definition of what homeless prevention looks like um, and outlines what constitutes as prevention and what does not. This two framework models actually kind of work in correlation with each other. It's the idea that we should take a look at different models that have worked in different communities in the past to prevent homelessness and look at what has worked, what hasn't worked, and really only implement the parts that have worked in order to see um, optimal success rates of homelessness prevention. Um, and the third part of this entire framework is a, a typology. And this typology is basically a description of the various categories in which policies, practices, and even just general rules of our community have to be developed in order to understand who was responsible for this form of homelessness prevention. So that way these um, rules are really early on established in the community in preventing homelessness against youth. Um, so this frame, this this prevention framework really sets out to um, develop a common, but moreover, a normalized form of language in understanding homelessness prevention, providing concrete examples, and really exploring the question of who, in the end, is ultimately responsible for homelessness prevention. Um, the reality is that we can never truly end homelessness until we are able to address how to stop the flow, the, pop the pipeline into homelessness. And I think doing that comes from recognition and through education, which is what we've been attempting to do throughout this entire podcast. Uh, with this being said, right now you'll hopefully be able to see a screen with all of the resources, all of the sources that we've used throughout this podcast. As well, you'll be able to take a look in the description box and see that we have attached a huge list, a very long list of resources that you can actually go through if you uh, yourself or know anybody who is going through um, homelessness. And because this is a great issue that we want to really... Um, reduce the statistics concerning youth um, and I think part of that comes with having to acknowledge the issue here which is that we don't have a strong prevention plan against it. With this being said I will actually conclude the entire podcast um, and on behalf of our entire Save the Children and West and Buddies team thank you for watching and uh, I hope you like and subscribe to our channel.